Hey guys, what's up? It's JRP77 from JG Games, and in this tutorial, we are going to be making a bow and arrow. So I kind of want to make this Hanzo style in Overwatch. If you've played Overwatch, you'll know who I'm talking about because of the infamous Hanzo main meme. But if you haven't played Overwatch, basically he's a hero with a bow. I'm going to try to put some gameplay up on the screen right now. Basically, whenever you hold down the fire button, it pulls back the bow, and you can actually let go the arrow at different times. So basically, you can apply it applies more damage whenever you hit it farther, and it hit, applies less damage whenever you just kind of tap the button, but it fa fires faster. So we're not going to be doing the damage part today, but we're actually going to be doing the bow part today. So consider this a make it real Hanzo bow spectacular thingy. All right, so let's just go ahead and jump right into this. First of all, we need to disable the melee weapon so that this doesn't interfere. I accidentally clicked the wrong thing. Disable it just by clicking this check mark right up here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a new C sharp script called bow script. Now we're, going to we're not going to touch this script right now, but first of all, we need to create our debug object. Now basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a very basic arrow for our bow to fire. Now later in the series, we're going to even end up modeling an arrow and a sword and stuff like that. But for right now, we just need to model or we just need to do a very basic thing. So we're going to use the built-in objects. So I'm going to create a new folder inside of our custom folder called prefabs. And inside, and now we're going to go to game object, 3D object sphere. We're going to scale this down to 0 0.5 by 0 0.5 by 0 0.5. And then we are going to drag and drop this object. We're going to rename it first to debug bullet. I typed in dot bullet. I don't know why. Debug bullet then drag it into our prefabs folder and now we need to create a new material now i've already made a material for this basically standard material except the albedo is pink we're just going to drag and drop this onto our debug bullet and now we just need to go to here hit apply and it will save it to our prefab now on our prefab we just need to add one more script and that is our arrow script now, i'm going to go ahead and do that in advance so i'm going to go create c sharp script arrow script all we're going to do pretty much is copy the damage script from melee weapon and move it over here. So now what we're going to do is going to melee weapon and we're just going to copy this function right here because this function is the important part. So we're going to delete everything and we're going to create a new public int. I can't type. We're going to create a new public int called damage and then we're going to create void on trigger enter collider call basically if you haven't watched the rest of the series or any of my other tutorials this just checks for a basic collision then we're just going to paste in that statement right there and save it and it should work so now that we've got that we can go ahead and write our bow script now this is going to be a pretty hard script to write it's going to be long i'll try to explain it after every section and try to explain everything that's going on because there is a ton going on but bear with me, it's actually not that complicated. Start off by deleting everything as usual, and I'm gonna go back to my normal format. I'm gonna create a new public, I'm gonna create a new float. First of all, I'm gonna create a new float called charge. I'm not gonna make this public because I only want this to stay in this script. Basically, this is gonna be how much our bow charges up. So the longer you hold down the button, the, this variable is going to go up. Then I'm going to create a public float called charge max. And then we need to create one more public float called charge rate. So basically, this is how much our gun, our bow has charged up as far as how far he's pulled back. This is how far he can pull back before it stops. Then this is how fast it actually happens. So now we need to create a couple more variables, the first of which being our key code for firing. So I'm going to create a new public key code called fire button. Now we need to create this stuff for our bullet to actually fly out, or our arrow, I guess, in this case. So I'm going to create a public transform called spawn. Basically, what this is, is this is where the arrow is going to spawn in relation to our character. We're going to make this object in just a second. Then we're going to create a public rigid body, and we're going to call this arrow. Arrow object, like so, not arrow object zero. Basically, this is going to represent our arrow, but you'll notice that this component's a bit weird. We've never seen rigid body before. 
Rigid body basically is the component that makes objects appear real. It gives them gravity. It gives them like a weight in your scene. It's very useful for things like projectiles so that they fall and rise with however you fire them. And that's actually what we need to add to our prefab, I believe. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we are going to go to our prefab, click on it, and go to add component. We're going to go add component, physics, crypto physics duty, physics, rigid body. Leave that all the same. Okay then, so I'm going to save this. And now that we've got this, I'm going to go ahead and jump back in to our bow script. So we're going to create a new void update. This is where we're going to check all of our input from. And inside here, we're going to write an if statement to see when our player has started holding down the fire button. So I'm going to say if input dot get key fire button. And then afterwards, we're going to do the two and symbols so that we have another condition for this if statement to work. It's just a simpler way than having to make two if statements. We're going to check and see if the charge is less than the charge max. Basically what this is gonna do is that if the if it's charged up all the way, we can't go any farther, but if it's charged up just a little bit under, then it can keep going up. The charge can keep increasing. This is gonna check just to see if we're holding the key down and if the charge is less than the charge max. That's all there is to it. So we're just gonna say charge plus equals time dot delta time. This is basically the distance between frames. I honestly have no idea what's going on with here. The dictionary thing says the time and seconds it took to complete the last frame, but I really don't understand what it is. If somebody knows what it is specifically and can give me some examples on where to use it, please put it in the comments below. I don't, I haven't researched time that the time costs that much, so I really don't know that much about it. And then we're just going to multiply time dot delta time by charge rate so that we have control over our speed at which our arrow charges up. Now underneath here, I'm going to debug.log the current charge because I want us to see what our charge is currently at. So debug.log charge dot to string. Like this. Semicolon at the end so that we don't get an error. Now that we got this, I'm going to go down, create a new if statement, and we're going to say input dot get key up. This is going to check for whenever we release the key. Again, same key. Fire button. And we're going to open this up. Now here we need to do some complicated, well, not really complicated, just long coding. So bear with me now. I'm going to explain this line at the very end. So we need to create a new rigid body called arrow. And we're going to set it equal to instantiate and in the parentheses, we're going to write arrow object, comma, spawn dot trans dot position, comma, quaternion dot identity. And then at the end, as rigid body. Okay, so very quickly, here's what happens. We are creating a new rigid body object to substitute for this, and we're going to call it arrow. Now, basically, this function right here is going to make a new object in the scene based on this one right here. Think of it like this is the blueprint object, and this is the building we're actually making. So this is what we're going to be. This is like a visual representation of what we're going to be making. This is actually what's created on the site. So that's going to spawn in this object right here, and it's going to put it in the spawns object's position. Now this object is gonna be, this is why we use a transform, so that we can get the exact position of the object. And then we got quaternion.identity, which basically just um, sets a, the standard rotation of the object. And then we have this at the end as rigid body. This is because instantiate creates what's called an object, as you can see in the help right here. But we need to say as rigid body so that this allows us to cast the object into a rigid body form. It's annoying, but that's just how it works. So now what we need to do is we need to add the force of the charge to the object. So what we're going to say is we're going to say arrow dot add force trans or spawn dot forward times underscore charge. 
Now, so this is basically just gonna add as much force as we've charged up right here, right there. At the very end, we need to write comma force mode dot impulse. Now, if you've used add force before, you've probably, if you're a beginner, you probably haven't used this. Basically, this is just going to apply all of the force at once rather than applying it slowly like an add force normally would. It's just going to apply it all in one giant burst as soon as it spawns out. This prevents delay. It's very useful to use these force modes so that you know exactly what's happening with your add force. And then at the very end, we're going to write charge is equal to zero so that we can reset and fire again um, the attack thing. And then we're going to delete one of these like so, fix that formatting. That should fix it. Alrighty, so now that we've got that, we can delete this from our scene. And now we can go to our main camera, go to Game Magic, Create Empty Child, rename this to bow underscore weapon. Now on here, we're going to add a component, bow script. We're going to set the charge max to 100. We're going to set the charge rate to 80. We're going to set the fire button to mouse zero, like our other one. That's why we had to disable melee weapon or else it would have bugged it up. Mouse zero. We're going to set the spawn to this current object. And then we're going to go to our project and go to prefabs. I'm going to click the bow weapon again and drag in the debug bullet into right here. So now we've got this, we need to go to our bullet and we need to add on our arrow script. So I'm just gonna type in arrow script like so, and I'm gonna give it five damage. I'm gonna select the enemy because it's gonna be kind of hard to see it. I'm gonna try to highlight both these things at the exact same time. I'm try to highlight the console below as well as the current enemy's health so that you can see both the charge and the health at the same time. So I'm gonna hit play and we're gonna jump into our scene as soon as I start holding down my left mouse button, you'll notice it goes all the way up to 101 and then it stops. That's just because it has to round up because, well, we just held it down. Now, if I just lower it down a little bit, you'll notice that as soon as I let go, it goes up like so, and that went way too far, so I'm going to aim down a little bit more. And for some reason, I've noticed this, it does not like me doing this. Now, I don't know why it doesn't like me doing this, but I think I may have just figured it. Now we've got to do one thing with our debug bullet. We need to click on it and go to spear collider is trigger. And then we just can hit play. I'm gonna try to highlight the console and the right side equally so that you can see both the charge and the current health. I'm gonna select the enemy right now. And you'll notice that if I hold it down, you'll notice that our charge goes all the way up to 101. I'm gonna aim low because it's gonna shoot up a little bit. And then as soon as it does that, as soon as I let go, charge clears, health goes to 10. I can charge it up again. Health goes to five. I can charge it up just a little bit and it goes to zero. Now this is the cool part is that whenever I hold it down and I go all the way up to 100, it fires really quickly, right? Well, if I just click my mouse button and I'm only getting about five charges or so, you'll notice that the bullet's not flying very far. That's a very useful way to actually get a collision is just to, or just to make something stand out because we can now put this wherever we want and it just is behaving like a regular bow or not a regular bow. And you'll notice that it has fall off in everything, just it's not falling off as quickly. I'm not sure if you can see that, but that's how it's gonna happen. That's basically all there is to making a bow in Unity. I know this tutorial was really long, but trust me, when I was researching this topic, it was like the tutorials were 50 minutes long, and I hope this solves a couple of y'all's problems, and it hopefully it will be cut down. I've recorded this, it took me about, it's, it's longer than the other ones, for sure. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you have any questions or comments, concerns, leave those in the comment section below. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If this video sucked, you know what to do. If it didn't, drop a like, and don't forget to subscribe for more content. Don't forget to check out our website, social media, and merch, as well as our community Discord server. All those links will be in the description below. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.